Hello and welcome to Quartz Light, your car brochure channel. In today's episode, we'll start a new Christmas series for the Ford Cars brochure, December 1975, starting with the Escort. <laughs> Welcome back to Corsolite, and if you're new to Corsolite, we're a car brochure channel looking at cars from around the world in brochure form for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s, so if you're interested in cars and car brochures, please consider subscribing, it really helps the channel. Anyway, today is Ford Friday, every Friday we look at a Ford. Today, we're in 1975, and I thought this was a great one to start with on the 1st of December, looking at this December 1975, like a little bit of a Christmassy edition of the all Ford models brochure. This brochure starts with the Ford Escort, so that's where we'll start off. I guess before we start with the brochure, a few people have mentioned the cats and introducing the cats. Um, always difficult with cats though, because they're never there when you want them to be there. This is Midnight. She is uh, a year and a half old and kind of like the attention seeking cat. So if anyone's going to be close to the camera, it is going to be Midnight. And I guess throughout the episodes, if we do find a time when the cats are somewhere near I'll try and introduce them anyway let's go back to the brochure so here is today's brochure Ford cars all model catalog December 1975 proudly showing the mark 3 facelifted Ford Cortina and at the bottom here it says make it a value for money Christmas with Ford so kind of like a time there you was choosing your Ford car for December and of course I guess we'll ask the question as we go along which car would have you have picked if you was in the market for a new car in December 1975 to get it on the road in the UK on all those salt covered roads so give it a bad start to its life I guess uh, but anyway let's open the brochure up and see what we can find so as we open the brochure it's the Ford Escort that we see first, of course. This is the days before the Fiesta appeared. So this is your starting of the range for Ford in 1975. The, as there we go, Midnight does wonders across the camera, she likes to do. Um, this is 1975, so we are starting with the Ford Escort. And seems to be the theme of this brochure, seems to be this, a VFM value for money so that's kind of like the key uh, that we're talking about a time i guess when we're thinking more about cost savings and fuel economy as fuel prices rise of course first car shown the mark ii ford escort the very lowly popular um so that's where we'll start off so let's turn the page and have a look at this base model so the next page does introduce the Ford Escort popular, the very basic um, Ford Escort at the time. A real stripped down version really, very much a poverty spec. And unusual to see in a brochure, isn't it? A double page spread for the very base model, but here we go. And then just a very tiny little wording just to say how much extra your popular plus has, which is unusual, but certainly featuring that popular um, and I think basically as it says here Ford value for money starts here so they really are promoting that sort of value for money model um, we'll certainly zoom in on the car in a moment but let's start off with some of this text just to see what you actually got on your Escort Popular in December 75 so like I say no Fiesta at this time you have to wait for over a year to get the Fiesta. I'm not sure if it was worth waiting for the Fiesta or was this a better buy? I kind of feel the Fiesta was probably a better buy if you're really looking for value for money. But at this time, this is your choice if you're really counting the pennies. The new Escort Popular has all the new Escort virtues of stylish looks, comfort and roominess, more window space with better all-round visibility for the driver and the family. Good news 
for the family too is the same extra legroom in the back. Add this to the variable control heater and phase level ventilation and improve sus suspension and you'll see uh, sorry, so you'll start to see why the new Escort Popular offers you even more comfort, roominess and real value for money than ever before. And remember, the Escort is this time relatively new model, the Mark II, roughly around about a year before this brochure, the first Escort Mark IIs were rolling off the production line, so still a relatively new car. We get some information about it. I'm not going to read it all, but you know, black window surrounds, black door handles and locks, black badges, black bumpers, rather than that sort of shiny chrome that we can get on higher models. Engines we can get as an 1100 or a 1300. And there we are, a little bit of information about the exterior equipment too. Circular, semi sealed beam headlights. Remember the escorts. The round headlights on the lower spec models. I'm not going to read it all, but you can certainly pause the screen if you do want to read it all. There is a little bit of note on the bottom, though, on the dark body colours. The badging has got a bright finish, although still, you know, black bumpers, etc. And then um, there we've got the interior equipment and again i'm not going to read all that out but if you don't want to pause that screen certainly you can have a look at it. all the equipment or lack of it on the new escort popular now we do get a little bit of a script at the end here telling us about the next model up the escort popular plus so it's got all the features of that very base model um, except it can be two or four doors with childproof rear door locks carpet in the passenger car compartment reversing lights fabric trim rather than vinyl on that base model uh, dipping rear view mirror full width padded front parcel tray um, bit of information about the wheel choices and then extensive noise insulation and popular plus script on the fascia I think the key is that extra noise insulation, but I think overall, I think the average person would have probably gone up to a popular plus at least. I'm sure it wasn't much more to get a popular plus rather than that very base model, which of course it makes that very base popular model. It's only a rare car today. I don't know how many are still left. I'm sure of them, a few of them were probably converted into sports and you know faster models but i wonder how many are left that are just still in that very base popular trim and then we do get an image of that base model really promoting this car you can see it's got these nice hubcaps on it and then no sign of any sort of bright work anywhere else black surrounds everywhere even down to little 1.1 so this is the very base model this is a 1.1 popular it does say that 1.1 badge i think would have been in bright um uh, a brighter finish if you got a dark color because obviously you wouldn't have been able to see it if you picked a black one i guess you can also make out of the back a little bit of an antiquated idea that sort of like leaf spring at the rear of the escort now there isn't any pictures of the Popular Plus in this brochure, strangely. It's usually the other way around. They're usually showing like the Popular Plus and saying, hmm, this is all you get on the Popular. But like I say, unusual to be really promoting that very base model. I do have a picture of the Popular Plus in another brochure. Um, so I'll just grab that. And this particular brochure is actually for the year later, so May 76. Um, exactly the same car featured for the popular of course but we do get a glimpse at least of the popular plus so we'll zoom in on that noticeable by not having those sort of like chrome hubcaps he's more of a sporty look wheel i guess we could describe it as so back to december 75 and back to the next model in the lineup the escort l as it says the escort with a lot extra some would say forget the populars altogether and just like stars here a bit more equipment obviously on the l model uh, standard extras mean extra value for money still going with that extra value for money theme of course at this time uh, the l has got those round headlights this is before 
any sort of a phase lift. Uh, we'll certainly start by looking at some of the text, then we'll go through some of those images for the Escort L. We start is giving some information about the body. I'm not going to read all that, but of course you can pause it if you want to read the full text. Engine. We've now got an 1100 or 1300. It also says we've got the optional 1100 economy engine, which is available. And then the exterior features. A lot more bright work, of course, on the L, which we'll certainly have a look at in a moment. Again, if you want to pause that screen to read all that equipment, you can do, because we're going to move down to the interior equipment. which is, you can see, I can't even fit it all on the screen, so we're going to have to have two bytes at this, but there is a lot more equipment on the L model now um, compared to those popular models, as you would kind of like expect. So if we move down, there's all that, and of course you can pause the screen if you want to read it all. Just not enough time in these brochure reviews to read every single thing as you can imagine. So let's have a look at some of those images and we'll get a better idea of what this model has. And as you see, we got more sort of bright work, more chrome on there now, haven't we? We even got a little bit of a side stripe on there. I always like yellow cars for Fords in the 70s. I think they really suit them. We also get a nice look at that interior. That red colour looks really good, I think. And then if we look at the steering wheel, escort badging on the steering wheel, as you can imagine, instrumentation, very limited, no rev counter. Does give you an idea of the boot size. And there is a little bit of a blurry sort of nighttime image on there. But it does give you an idea of you know, much more bright work around the windows and a little bit of a look at the front. Now, when we move up to the GL, this seems to be like a big change. Obviously, we've got to these um, square headlights now, and I must admit, I do actually prefer the round headlights, but nevertheless, um, with the vinyl roof and the, the side stripes, it certainly looks like it has gone more luxurious. We'll have a quick look at um, what extras we get in this, what it says, luxury features in the GL. So the Escort GL adding luxury to comfort, value for money, economy with luxury. Still talking about that, value for money. Uh, body as the L, we've only got the option of a 1300 this time. Exterior equipment as the Escort L, but with rubber bumper inserts, body side mouldings, two square halogen headlights, GL badging and sports road wheels. Now as we go down we've also got the interior equipment as the Escort L but with luggage compartment light, unique trim style on seats with added comfort with fully trimmed doors and quarter panels, vanity mirror on passenger sun visor, centre console incorporating clock, chrome gear shift lever, armrest with integral grab handle, illuminated cigar lighter, soft feel fascia trim and additional noise insulation so it looks like quite a smart car in red when we look at the interior we get an idea of a slightly more upmarket interior there is another little image of those wheels we also get these larger image here um, again referring to it as value for money so the escort gl featuring reversing lamps loop pile carpet and reclining front seats. There is a little bit of, a little bit note at the end saying the Escort GL window surrounds are now finished in body colour with bright mouldings, not black as illustrated. So a little bit of a change there. Um, let's go back and have a look at that. Okay, yeah, you can see those black inserts in between the doors there. Obviously that is body colour now. So here we go, then we move up to the Escort Sport. And if you notice, we're back to round headlights, so you get these, uh, these extra auxiliary driving lights with these. And I think 
Yes. I prefer the look. Like I say, I prefer the round headlights, but with those kind of like driving lights in there as well, I think it looks really good. And what a great colour this particular example is in. We'll have a look at the tech first and then we'll look at the images. So the Escort Sport, sport by name and sporty by nature. Still talking about value for money, in this case, value for money at performance. So it says the body as the Escort L. There's just a four-door model only with a 1600cc engine. Um, so you can get, it does say lower on though, you can get it with a 1300GT or a 1600GT engine. Exterior equipment as the Escort L but with reversing lights, uh, front quarter bumpers, rear bumpers finished in black, body side and bonnet top coach line treatment with sport script, two black door mounted rear view mirrors, black finished window surround, uh, two circular halogen headlights, two halogen auxiliary driving lamps, front and rear overriders, sports road wheels. And then the interior equipment is telling us as the L, but with head restraints on non-reclining front seats. Sports steering wheel tachometer passenger grab handles are not fitted to this model, which is an unusual little bit of thing to say. And then as we look, kind of like a bit of a mixture of the both, isn't it? Like black and the bright work on here. We can see at the front there, it's got that sort of split front bumper with those overriders. The steering wheel, quite a nice steering wheel actually with that sort of like flag motif on the front. We do however get a rev counter just to remind us we are in something a bit more sporty now. And then the main image, the grill, a bit of a chrome piece splitting it up with the Ford badge written out. 1.6 on the side, a little bit of some nice coachwork style um, decals and lines and the 1600 Sport at the back there and we can also see those head restraints that it was talking about and then the top of the range luxury model of course the escort gear again back to those square headlights and rather nice wheels by the looks of it so let's have a look at the text so there we go the escort gear the escort with everything this time super stylish value for money. Body as the Escort L, we're gonna have the 1300 or the 1600 GT engine. As the Escort L, but with rubber bumper inserts, body side moldings, front and rear overriders, all round tinted glass, bright exhaust trim, black painted window surrounds, two halogen halogen, um, headlights, black vinyl roof, sports road wheels with bright rim embellishers, bootlip moulding and a gear badging. And the interior equipment quite extensive actually, so as with the Escort L but with colour key cut pile carpet in the passenger compartment and on the door sills, luggage compartment light and carpet, luxurious seats, coverings in hard wearing savannah fabric trim, seat valances, integral head restraints on front seats, vanity mirror on passenger sun visor, centre console incorporating clock, chrome gear shift lever, armrest with integral grab handles, illuminated cigar lighter, colour keyed perforated headlining, real, real wood veneer on fascia, very fancy, glove box, soft feel rimmed steering wheel, dual tone horn, tachometer, extensive sound installation and of course those all important gear badging. So here we go, that's a little bit of an interior picture of the gear, looks very nice actually doesn't it and you can just about make out the sort of wood veneer on the front and obviously this is an automatic model. And then this is obviously the main image and it does look quite nice, I mean you can't like forget it does look quite a nice car doesn't it, the Escort gear when it's brand new, kind of like in my mind I just always remember them very rusty and falling apart to be honest with you but they do look nice and I'm sure they look lovely in the showroom particularly like these very unusual uh, wheels on here as well and obviously this is a 1.6 and the gear badge above it another little side image and also we get a little bit of a difficult to tune in on, on there uh, but a bit of an image from the rear as well but I think what's most interesting about this particular page for the Escort gear is if we look at the next year brochure, as in 
1976. They've changed the colour of the car. It's exactly the same image, but they've changed the colour of the car to purple velvet. And they've kind of like tried to alter all these pictures to purple velvet. But obviously, exactly the same image. Just to remind us, we can't always trust what we see in these car brochures. So there we go, then we come to these, the final models, the very practical and quite stylish actually, the Escort Estates. At this time there was available in three spec levels, something just called the Escort Estate, not an Escort Estate popular or anything like that, just known as the Escort Estate. We've got the Escort L and the Escort GL, which looks like is the one actually featured on these images. Okay, so Escort Estates made for working in comfort. Value for money workhorses. The Escort Estate car is now available with the 1100 economy engine. So like I said, three different models. It starts off with the Escort Estate car. Available as 1100, 1300 or optional 1100. Looks says their exterior equipment as the Escort Popular, so I think that very basic popular with a few little extra bits on there, like a door mounted rear view mirror. Not asking a great deal to stand that on there, really, are we? Um, you can pause that screen if you do want to read it all, though. We've also got, if we move the camera along, the Escort L. Uh, that's just available as a 1300 again i'm not going to read it all but you can pause that screen and have a look if you want to and then finally the top model for the estate range the gl again available as a 1300 and of course that is the car that's pictured so we'll have a look at that now so a few interesting images and in fact quite an interesting color this one isn't it um, we've also got on here a rather a nice looking interior picture actually quite amazing looks like an orange trim which is quite unusual isn't it on this silver version and then of course the usefulness of the estate with you know I like how the load area is very low so you didn't have to lift items very high to put them in there we can also see that um, reversing light sort of tacked on as a bit of an afterthought and then the main image of this 1300 GL. I quite like this sort of long rear window. I always thought that was quite an unusual feature to have such a long window back in the day. And this image is really showing. I thought it was going to show off fishing actually, but it's not. Is it? It's, uh, you know, you're going out for your weekend dive. A little bit unusual, but there we go. But obviously showing the practicality of that large uh, luggage area. And in the back we get the specification, so the transmission, it's obviously a 4-speed gearbox, all syn synchro mesh and floor mounted. A um, bit of information on the steering, the brakes, so drum brakes all round on the 1100. Quite antiquated that really isn't it? And then front discs and rear drums on the 1100, 1300 and 1600. And also the suspension. Um, and I've always thought, you know, with these escorts, that sort of leaf springs at the rear is a very sort of old fashioned idea. It also showing us performance figures in this. So that basic 1100 economy engine only has a top speed of 76 and a 0 to 60 of 24.5 seconds. You were in no hurry if you decided to get the 1100 economy. Uh, the standard 1100 was a bit faster, top speed 82, 0 to 16, 20.8 seconds. Still not exactly a speedy car though, is it? Um, the 1300, the standard 1300 did 87 miles per hour, 0 to 16, 17 seconds. And then really you had to get these, um, these GT spec ones to get any sort of Nowhere near any sort of respectable performance, really. So the 1300 GT top speed of 94 or 95 if you got the gear version, and then of course the not 60 time of 13.9 seconds on the sport, 14.3 seconds on the gear, and then the 1600 GT top speed 101 for either the sport or the gear. The Sport doing the 0 to 16 in 11.1 seconds, the gear doing it in 11.4. 
We also have the options, which obviously are available at extra cost for the various different models, um, from automatic transmission to metallic paint, rear fog lights, reclining seats, head restraints, sports road wheels. And if we move down a little bit further, we can then see the rest of the options. And it's also shown on there that vinyl roof was actually an option on the GL model standard on the gear. So you could spec it up however you wanted really. Next Ford Friday we're going to be looking at the Ford Cortina for 1975 and we can still, it's still talking about value for money. Okay so there you go, the Ford Escort for 1975. Which Escort from that range would you choose? For your Christmas present in 1975 or would you prefer to go up the range and certainly we'll go up the range uh, through the next few weeks in our lead up to Christmas. Thank you so much for watching today's Ford Friday. Please do like and subscribe if you've not done already. Uh, many more episodes to come. Have a great weekend of course. Tomorrow will be our Saturday special where we we'll look at a special edition car so have a look out for that but for now we'll say take care. All the best. We'll see you very soon and goodbye.